Hello guys, welcome to Houdini Amazing. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to create a lava shader inside Houdini using Karma and Solaris. So first to understand how to create this shader, we need to know that we need some attributes in order to create this properly. So I'm going to go back to a flip simulation. I create this setup in another video. So if you don't know how to create uh, lava, uh, basically you are controlling the viscosity using temperature. So you can check out that video on my YouTube channel. I'm going to leave the link in the description. So basically what we did, I create a temperature attribute. I apply some noise and then inside the flip simulation, you can use the gas temperature update. This is going to start cooling the temperature, meaning that it's going to start dropping down that value. And as that value starts going down, viscosity goes up. So when it's hot, the fluid is moving faster. And as the temperature drops down and the viscosity goes up, then the fluid is going to be more sticky and it's going to move slower. So if we check the particle simulation, here we have the fluid falling onto the rock. And if we check the attribute, the temperature attribute, here we can see the color ramp I create from black to white. And in, the, in between, we have some yellow and some uh, red color. Uh, so basically, it's going from 0 to 1. And on the 0, we have the black color, which is uh, more sticky, uh, more viscous. And then we have here, uh, when the fluid is born, we have the higher temperatures. So that's basically the idea. So in my case, I did the meshing process using the particle fluid surface, and I make sure to transfer that attribute into the mesh. You can transfer the attribute after. In this case, I transfer the temperature attribute and the viscosity uh, here in the transfer attributes in the particle fluid surface. Then we cache the surface, and this is only to display in the viewport. And for the actual shader, I created two attributes. One, the first one, I inverted the temperature using a point bob. I basically use a fit just to invert from 0 to 1 to 1 to 0. And then I create ramp just to remap some values. Uh, in this case, this attribute, if we check here, temp in, you can see that it's basically the, the opposite. And I use this to play with the with the specular and reflections. In this case, I wanted to have more reflection uh, when the when the fluid was uh, getting more viscous. I didn't want too much highlights on the when this was hot. Uh, so that was the main idea on this first attribute. And on the next attribute, basically just a ramp, just to play with the temperature, just to remap. Again, this is gonna be all preference once we start playing with the colors. It's going to be up to you if you want to, uh, how do you want to remap this? Again, if we don't remap, we have this value. And if we remap, we are maybe getting more contrast on the lower end. And then this is for the normal. It's just a smooth for the mesh. And now this is the important part. We start playing with the color based on the temperature attribute again. In this case, I wouldn't use this as reference. I would just go create the material and then start playing with both the ramp and the color uh, just to see the final result because again we're going to have a lot of emission uh, some of glowing um, some lighting so it, it's going to look way different so the idea is just to create these two nodes and then we can start playing with the shader so let's go to karma and start creating the shader and one more thing before we go to karma and solaris pretty important to rename the color in this case we're creating the color attribute it's going to be cd but to read this properly inside uh, Karma, we need to rename this using an attribute rename. I just rename this from CD to color. And then we can, if we display the flag here, now we have the color attribute rename. So it's super important to rename that color attribute. And now we can go back to Karma. So we're here inside uh, Solaris, pretty standard. I have, Im I'm importing the background. I'm importing the rock, the lava, this is the mesh. We have a few cameras. In this case, I'm just using a dome light with a HDR, pretty basic lighting and setup. And this is the material library when I create the background shader, the rock. And in this case, we want to focus on the lava shader. So if we go inside the lava shader, we have a few attributes we're bringing from SOPS to uh, connect into the shader. This is a material X standard. A surface or so pretty standard. Uh, the only things I did was first to create a, 
uh, geometry property value. This is gonna allow me to bring those attributes and start connecting this into the shader. And the attributes I brought was temp in, and that was gonna be for specular here. And we can play with the roughness, it's up to you, depending which kind of look you're after. So if you check online, you're gonna find some looks of lava that they look more like orange and black, some they have like really white and bright uh, spots. So it's really up to you which kind of look you're, you're after. So feel free to play with this value once you have everything set up. And then the most important thing is not gonna be the specular, it's gonna be the emission and the emission color. Here, if we go into the emission, we have two values connected, two attributes. We have in one attribute, we have the temperature. In this case, I'm multiplying just to be a bit brighter. This is gonna be the, the emission, how much are we emitting? Uh, and this is gonna be the color we are using to edit. In this case, it's gonna be the color, and this is gonna uh, be, we can play with this, uh, with the RAM, just to play with the value. So we're gonna go and set the flag here to start seeing the these values. As you can see, this have, we have a bright white here on the emission. And the most important thing uh, in terms of look is gonna be the RAM. So we can, uh, here pin this and go back to the let's go back to 1.5 I was the value that was working pretty well for me and now we can go back to sub level and here we can start playing with the with the ramp again depending the look you are going after we can really start playing with this value as you can see as we move this we have a lot of different looks now it's getting way darker way sooner so it's gonna be up to you uh, maybe you don't want that uh, white uh, and bright stuff in the beginning, so we can go and just stay with some orange look and play more with kind of like this kind of look when we have more like orange, uh, red, and black. So again, once you have everything set up, you can play a lot of time with these uh, values. You can play with the ramp. You can even uh, go back. Maybe now that I'm not using that uh, that white at the beginning. You can go back and maybe let's say i want something uh, a bit brighter now we have more yellow uh, and red in the beginning but now we can maybe uh, get back uh, that emission value again maybe something like two if you want something more glowy three again at this point you know the sky is the limit you can play as much as you want depending on your reference so this is the basic idea this is going to be the value you're going to be playing just the temperature to control the emission and then the color to control the emission color. Again, this the specular is more like an extra. You don't need that. And the, the, the final look is not going to change that much. Just a bit the, 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 just a bit of reflection. So it's going to be up to you. I would say this two is going to be the main thing that's going to be driving your shader. And also remember that we are playing with the ramp, but we can also start playing a bit with this ramp when we are remapping the temperature so depending how you build this ramp you're gonna get a lot of different results for example if i get here uh, now we have uh, yellow orange and some reddish at the end and if we start let's say playing with this ramp we're gonna get black way sooner so again uh, as you play with this ramp and with the color uh, node here with the color ramp you're gonna get a lot of different uh, results so feel free to play with that depending the look you are after but this should give you enough freedom to control the final result depending on your reference so that was a quick overview of how to build a lava shader inside houdini using karma and solaris again if you have any other question feel free to uh, drop it in the comments so guys thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you on the next one